Bruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. This week's uh, lecture on my thoughts is, uh, what is earth and hell? After we just finished our discussion on heaven, so I thought this would be apropos. Now, there are different opinions as to what earth and hell are really are. And I would like to explore one, one opinion I found in the book called Me Am Loez. So it says, seven earths were created, one above the other. Under each, there are subterranean waters. As a ship floats on the sea, so each earth floats on the water beneath it. The seven earths are Eretz, Adama, Gei, Neshia, Tzia, Arka, and Tevel. Now we live on the, wor on the world Tevel, the largest of all. And that parallels to these are seven firmaments, one above the other, each containing angels, one greater than the next, and according to the Zohar, these seven earths are seven mystical habitations. Now the first habitation is very dark, with no light whatsoever. It is a place of winds and storms. The angel in charge is named Tahariel, and he has 70 subordinate angels who follow his instructions. He glows brightly like a flame and can be seen by night, but not by day. When daylight comes, he descends into the abyss. The second habitation has some light. Here there are angels who cause people to do wrong and advise them to walk in the path of evil. All actions done uh, by man, good and bad, are brought here and recorded in a book. The third habitation contains some light and fire, which are channeled into the purgatory to punish the wicked. And this is where the angel Samal, Satan, exists with other angels of destruction. They also strive to cause people to sin, but each in a different way. When a person repents, does the tshuva, they have no authority to come near him. The fourth habitation is a bright place. Here live many perfect angels of mercy under the direction of the great angel, Padael, who has the keys to mercy and he opens the gates of righteousness for those who have repented so that their prayers will be accepted. The fifth habitation is the brightest of all. It contains angels of fire and water. And some of these angels sing praise to God in the middle of the night. Others do so near dawn. The great angel called Kadachiel is in charge of all of them. And when the first dawn breaks, they all assemble and sing to God and all the stars and other angels join them in their shira, in their song. From here we learn that one should try to say his prayers, his tefillah, early in the morning because it is a propitious time when all beings are praising God Almighty. The sixth habitation contains angels which God sends on special missions according to his will. The angel Uriel is in charge of them. The seventh habitation is our world and the most important of all. In the previous lecture, we mentioned that souls exist in the seventh firmament, Haravot. Paralleling them in this habitation are the bodies which serve God by keeping his commandments. There's another opinion that all seven earths are inhabited by humans, and the holy land is higher than, than all of them, and the highest of all is Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. Others say these earths are separated from one another by a firmament, these earths are inhabited by bizarre creatures, some of which have two faces, some have four, and some only one single side. They live for approximately 10 years. In the earth called Gay, there is a fire purgatory, Gay, Gay Hanim. The people on that earth plant trees, but they don't have any kind of grain. The earth called Neshia contains very small people, much like pygmies. They, are, they appear disfigured, having two holes in their head instead of nostrils. They also have poor memories. This is implied by the word neshia, which means forgetfulness. Neshia also has no trees, but no, had, probably also has trees, but no grain. The earth, the earth called Tsia is very barren, containing nothing good. The people there are very rich and handsome but they have no success since they plant trees and cannot enjoy them. The only wor world that has bread in it, Lechem, is the one in which we inhabit, our world. And it has four names. 
Eretz, Tevel, Adama, and Arka. And each name denotes a different season. Eretz denotes spring, the time when fruits begin to ripen, because the motion of ruts of the earth, they ripen quickly. In fact, the word Eretz, when God told the earth to do what it was supposed to do, the word ruts, you can hear the word run, comes in, is it coming from it. Tevel denotes summer, when the fruits acquire flavor. It is then that they possess a seasoning, a tavlin. Adama denotes autumn, because the land dries up and forms clumps of earth, Adama. Arka denotes winter. The earth is then empty, rake, and has no fruits remain. Another name for the earth is Chalad. It is called this because all land creatures have parallels in the sea, except for the Hulda, the mole. There's another opinion that there was originally only one earth, which was later divided into seven portions. This is important to know, as it gives us some idea of God's greatness. Ordinarily, something heavy cannot float on water. But even though the earth is very heavy, God commanded it to float on water, and then it was able to do so. There is not a place in the world where there is no water. All the world rests on water. Wherever one digs, one will eventually find water. Now, paralleling the seven holy chambers, God also arranged seven chambers of the other side. We therefore see that purgatory, Gehenna, has seven names. Bor, meaning pit. Shachet, meaning destruction. Duma, silence. Tit Hayaben, quicksand. Sheol, the abode of the dead. Tzalmabet, death shadow and the lower earth, Eretz Atak Tiat. Now the Yetzirah and evil inclination also have seven names. He is called Ra, evil, Tuma, defilement, Sona, an enemy, Evan, a stone, Michsho, a stumbling block, Arel, uncircumcised, and Siphoni, a viper. Now God set up these seven unclean chamber, chambers to defile the wicked, to judge them, and to punish them for not following a good path while they were in this world. The Derek Sha'adam Rotzalachet, Olichamoto, says that in the way that a person wants to go, that's how they lead him. Now the first chamber is called Bor Pit. It is like a dark pit with no smooth walls, pardon me, with smooth walls, so there is nothing to hold on to. In charge of this chamber is an angel called Duma. Under him is another force known as Pathuth, who is in charge of millions of angels. His job is to tempt people to sin. What he does is he sets beautiful images before a person's eyes, since it is the eyes which draw a person to sin. The same force stands next to a person when he is brought into this pit and gouges out his eyes. And that that caused this person to sin. The soul is then judged together with the body. The person is brought into this chamber surrounded by snakes and scorpions. Their stings burn him and cause him much suffering. He is then brought to be judged. This force has many assistants. It is their job to scrutinize what people say and also how they pray. When a prayer is not fit to enter the holy chambers, this force takes it up to heaven and says, see how bad this person's prayer is? And at the same time, it recalls all of that person's sins. He especially waits for a person to lose his temper and throw something in anger. The second chamber is called Shachat, destruction. It is even darker than the first. It has three gates. At the first gate, there is an angel who is called Astiria who is in charge of millions of angels of destruction. He has power over all who corrupt their souls by spilling their seed, by heterosexual, heter, heter, heterosexual pardon me, sodomy, or by masturbating with the person's hands. At the second gate, there's another angel called Tas Kifa, who is in charge of other angels of destruction. He has the power over all who commit the sin of incest or bestiality. At the third gate, is another angel whose name is San Gadiel. He has the power over all who have relations 
with Gentile women or commit adultery. The third chamber is called Duma, silence, and it is the darkest of all of, the cham of, all of these uh, chambers. It has four entrances. At the first entrance, there's an angel called Sakputia. His job is to receive every evil decree that comes from on high. When there are evil decrees, he stands in the middle of the road, harming anyone who is traveling alone, which is why we tell people not to travel alone at night. At the second entrance, there's an angel called San Gadiel. He presides over the first two chambers. He completes what has been decreed on high. And at the third entrance, there's an angel called An Gadrion. He is in charge of all pains, diseases, and fevers to punish people as they deserve. At the fourth entrance is an angel called Askara. This is an angel that causes young children to die, Rahman al He is the one who kills young people up to the age of 20. The fourth chamber is called Tit Hayaven, quicksand. People who make others sin are brought here. In this chamber, there is a place called Negatsarat, leprous plague. It is where slanderers and malicious gossipers are punished. There is also an evil false called Arirya, who is in charge of an angel who has the power over any person who curses himself. These words are poisonous, and when expressed verbally, they are received by this force who sees to it that they come true. This may connect with the saying, Al Tiftak Pal the Sutton, the one should not open his mouth to Satan. The fifth chamber is called Sheol, the abode of the dead, and it has a single entrance. Overseeing it is a force called Ava, hatred. Its job is to cause arguments and strife in the world, as well as murder and war. If a person gives tzedakah, charity to the poor in a time of famine to feed them, this merit causes these evil angels to be banished from the world. The sixth chamber has four gates. Their names are Mabet, death, Ra, evil, Sal Mabet, death shadow, and Ophel, darkness. In this chamber are inscribed all the sins of fornication and adultery, as well as all thoughts leading to such acts. Also in this cham chamber is a demon who tempts fools to sin when they see an attractive woman. This evil force tempts a person to arrange his hair and make himself look handsome. With that, he will be impressed with himself and his good looks and be drawn into sin. This angel then ascends to his place and denounces the person. He does not remain in this chamber, but goes back and forth, to and fro, from our world to entice others. In the seventh chamber are found all unclean souls. When a person sins, one of these souls descends and attaches itself to him. This is the highest of all the chambers. It has four openings in all directions, through which a glimmer of light shines from the holy chambers. Through these entrances, the righteous Gentiles can enter. These are the ones who behave decently toward the Jewish people and do not harm them. And how much more so for those Gentiles who actually benefit Jews. They are therefore worthy of rest and repose after death. Now even though many things in these chambers, such as fires, staffs, and garments, may seem to be like physical counterparts, do not think that they are actually the same. Nothing, I repeat, nothing in the physical world can possibly resemble things in the spiritual realm. The entire, the entire spiritual domain consists of a kind of light that is invisible to the physical eye. The human mind cannot grasp the good of the spiritual world or the world to come. The greatest pleasure in our world would not even be a millionth of that that we wait for in the future world. The benefits that a person derives in the future world for keeping even a single element of Torah is far greater than all the good that exists in our world. Similarly, the worst suffering in our world is nothing in comparison, comparison to the punishment of the soul in purgatory. Now everything in this world has a side of good 
and a side of evil. This is a world of what we call Bechira, free will. We can choose between the two. God therefore ordained seven chambers of holiness where good Jews receive their just reward, as well as seven parallel chambers of the other side where the wicked receive their just punishment. Now, my perspective on hell is slightly different. I believe that for the most part, all people, all people go to heaven. All the description of pain and torture are saved for the truly evil people in this world. People who hurt other people. People who cause other people pain in life. And of course, people who take another's life without just cause. Mass murderers, terrorists, people that perpetuate torturous acts on others. All will pay dearly for their sins. There is a day of reckoning. However, the average person will go to heaven. After all, God Almighty is our Father, and a father does not hurt his own child. So what is heaven? Call it Mount Everest. Everyone goes to the top of the mountain and revels in the majestic beauty that surrounds them. So the question becomes, why struggle in life to be righteous, to do the right thing, to go the extra mile? And the answer lies in how do you, how do you actually reach the top of the mountain? Are you being taken up by helicopter? Or are you climbing? I think that hell is when you've taken, been taken up by helicopter and you stand at the top of the mountain next to someone who climbed and then you realize that though you are feeling joy, you could have felt so much more had you just climbed. And even the person who climbed, did he climb up the easy way or did he climb up a way that challenged him? on the way up. Now it is true that even the best of people sin. And for, the God, for that God has given us the gift of tshuva, repentance. However, when we reach the next world we still come with some stains on our pristine souls. So before we are presented before God our Father, we would readily volunteer, volunteer to take a spiritual bath to remove those stains that our souls have accumulated while being on earth. The more prevalent the sin, the harder it may be to remove the stain. Much like a deep embedded spot in clothing that we take to the cleaners. Some spots come out easily, others require harsh chemicals and scrubbing. That to me is as close as most of us will get to hell, to a hell-like experience. May God bless us that we do most of our soul cleaning in this world and do not have to be spot cleaned in the next. And with that, may we herald in the coming of Mashiach Zikenu quickly and in our time.